Hey guys, Super Gadget Guy here. Uh, you guys see me taking out the uh, memory out of this uh, late 2011 uh, model MacBook Pro 15 inch. And here's the memory, the 8 gigabyte. The 16 went in fine, boot up the computer, everything works perfectly. Uh, don't have to do much. Um, so, one of the reasons I did the memory upgrade to the MacBook Pro is because of the I wanted to play with the Intel Nook. Um, so Nook is the Intel Next Union Union uh, Computing. Uh, so you have here. This is the one with the model number D54250 WYK. I have no idea why they make it so cryptic. Um, it's hard to understand, hard to remember. But um, what it does have is the um, new Haswell, the fourth generation uh, Intel Core processor. This is the Core i5 version. Um, so, as you can see, um, the front of the unit you have two USB 3.0 port and headphone jack, infrared sensor, and in the back you have the 19 volt 65 watt DC power connector, uh, mini display port, mini HDMI, Ethernet, uh, this Intel Gigabit LAN, and two more USB 3.0. So. It's a pretty powerful computer for under $400. Uh, but what it doesn't have is, aside from the processor, the motherboard, the connectors, is what else makes up part of the computer? Storage and memory. Um, and also a wireless car, since most people will probably want to use this um, in a wireless setting, so you have to buy all those things yourself. So the price gets add, adds up pretty quickly. But what I'm going to do is use this to um, install XBMC and um, do that. So, since I have to buy memory already, I figure I just buy the 16 gigabyte for the MacBook Pro and uses the extra memory from the MacBook Pro into the uh, the Nook. And the for the storage, um, this version, this is another version with the. H at the end for hard drive, I think, uh, that takes a 2.5 inch hard drive. Since this is a non-H model, this only uses the M SATA. Um, this is a M SATA SSD from Crucial. Again, um, this is a 240 gigabyte. Um, Price-wise, if you want to use for XBMC, you can get away with 120 gigabyte. I just feel like, eh, what the heck, I'll just get a 240, uh, better I.O., uh, better write speed. but. Again, XBMC situation doesn't really matter. I'm just saying, you know, try to feature proof. So the Nook plays this thing when you open the case. Um, it's pretty neat. Let's try it again. It's, it's, I wish more companies do this, but it's kind of just, I don't know. They charge you for it. <laughs> Basically plays the uh, Intel. I might be able to hack this box into something else. I wonder if we can re-record that into some weird noise or message, you know. Anyway, maybe play the music, you know. You first get a box, then you cut a, cut a home box. Anyways, um, let's not to be uh, focused on this here. So, um, the Nook is very small. Um, it's... The picture makes it look huge. Uh, Again, I'm making the box reference again. Uh, so the unit is really small. It's bigger than the Apple TV, um, the new app, current Apple TV, but it's definitely smaller than the first generation Apple TV. And uh, oops, did I just mess up the. Uh, so this is Intel's version. It's definitely a step up from the Raspberry Pi. I mean, cost ten times as much. But let's go over the ports later. See what else is in the box. Um, so you get a power brick but you don't get the power cord, um, the Mickey Mouse, whatever they call it, the three prong power. So you have to buy that separately. There is a model of the Nook. The same thing, it comes with the uh, power cable, but I just bought that one, it's like $5 on Amazon. Goes with it. Um, so put that aside, and you have uh, paperwork, and you also have a VSA mount. So for people who want to use this, for example, try to use it like a terminal or in a classroom setting, that you can actually mount this 
behind your monitor essentially so it's completely hidden away and uh, let's look at uh, life safe service whatever paper sticker yes I will save the sticker for something else and uh, Nook installation but so let's go let's just open it so because that's what we needed to install it anyways before we do that, let's just revisit the ports. There's a LED light on top, and there's a power button, USB, audio, headphone jack, and infrared, Kensington security lock, uh, power, exhaust fan, uh, mini display port, mini HDMI, Ethernet. So I have four USB total, but let's open it. Uh, it's very easy to open, it's just on the bottom. They're using the regular standard size Phillips screwdriver. One is free. Okay, I'm just gonna. It's a pretty tight fit, but there you have it. Um, they designed in such a way I don't think the screw can fall loose. I guess that's what I was expecting, but never mind. So there you have it. This is what the inside of this unit looks like. And you can also buy like aftermarket case. Let me turn on the light so you guys can see better. There's also you can buy aftermarket case. Basically, take this entire thing out, put in a bigger case to uh, utilize the SATA port, connect your computer. Uh, and as you can see, there are two of the. Um, MSATA or PCIe slot. You can use one of them for a wireless car. Let me actually consult the menu. I'm just hitting the box um, to see which one they recommend for what. So the bottom one they recommend for the uh, wireless card, and you have to remove a screw to use it. So I'm going to hit it again. You have to use different set of screwdrivers. So you remove the lower mounting screw to plug in the um, Bluetooth or wireless card and there's an antenna attached. Uh, and then the top one, you have to unscrew the higher riser to do that. So let's do the memory first because that's straightforward. And I have the memory right here. Make sure we don't have any static. And that's straightforward. And it says uses 1.35 volt module. And that's it. So now let's get to the riser. And I'm going to use the Ethernet, so I'm not going to use the, um, the lower wireless port, but that option is available. Maybe later on if I want to upgrade. And, and here is the M SATA storage, 240 gigabyte. Um, and then I'll just attach the uh, screw. This is definitely the uh, toward the higher end built of this unit here, because. Um, um, the whole thing together costs, um, I think it's like almost $700. Um, definitely can go cheaper for XPMC use, but I'm just, you know, just preparing a little bit. Uh, let's see, which way does this go? I have no idea where this way is supposed to go. But since the fan, let's see if it's. So, nope. It's either this way or that way, but it doesn't matter, I guess. So it's not a perfect cube. I guess I have it backwards. If that's over here. Okay. So according to the manual, I have it backwards. Normally I wouldn't care, but it is an i5 processor, even though it's a low voltage version. I want to make sure the um, 
the right shielding goes on the right. Okay, I guess I had it right the first time. Because there's the um, shielding that's interfering with the ports. And there you have it. And that it is all it takes to have a little mini computer that draws almost no power. Um, Max out, I think, is 65 watt, but that's under full low, but idle or minimal use. Definitely the top is a fingerprint magnet. Um, has an Intel 4th uh, generation Haswell Core i5 processor with 8 gig RAM and 240 gigabyte SSD. That's, I think, it's almost 500 megabyte um, read and 400 write, but I'm not so sure. Insane amount of I.O. in a very tiny small package. Uh, so I am definitely excited to um, install XBMC and play around with this and definitely great for like lab situation or classroom situation and definitely don't have to beef it out to be $700. You can keep this thing pretty much, I mean this is the i5 version, they also have the i3 version, also have the Bay Trail version which is Celeron, not as fast. But you can definitely go, this thing's basically the base roll version, and I think it's $180. i3 is around about $300, 290 280 and this is like almost $400, um, 390 ish So definitely there's like a wide range, and you can definitely spec it out to be less. You don't have to use the Crucial, you can use a cheaper, you know, 40 gigabyte to start, depends on your needs. Definitely very flexible and very easy to build. And... Um, I can't wait to play with this thing because it's so small. And there's also a, um, um, a a pro version from the the Brick Pro from uh, I think it's Gigabyte, not sure. Um, that has a Core i7. It's actually can use the Steam Box. So this I it has the this one has the um, Intel HD 5000 uh, graphic card. That's why I pick it. It's supposed to support up to 4K, but you know it's nice little neat computer and definitely a very unique packaging um, that comes in a very nice little box and has a sensor here how cool is that? when was the last time you opened a package that actually made a little noise or music or playing with some notes but there you have it um, except for the M setup that's not very readily available around the house, you know, for somebody who likes to build computers. But the definitely the um, SLDM is definitely, if you have any laptops in the last few years, if you have some extra left behind, you can just put in this. Um, so, there you have it, um, the Intel Nuke with um, Haswell i5 processor. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and please thumbs up and like this video. And thank you for watching. Subscribe!